What's going on everybody? So today I'm over at my buddy Micah's shop, Gaston Automotive Services, and you notice I've got Old Blue here with me. The purpose of this video is we're gonna go over some tech inspection things that could save you a lot of time and trouble when you go to an NHRA tech, uh, track. Now, granted, these things need to be applied to all tracks. You know, safety is one of the things that gets overlooked. And today we're gonna to be focusing mostly on cars that were street cars that have progressed. And we're gonna cover mostly from the 1149 mark down to 10 0. Now, I myself, I was a former tech inspector for the NHRA for three years. And I've seen a lot of things over the years. And, you know, people don't realize the importance of safety. It seems like everybody wants to go faster and the safety aspect of it gets ignored a lot of times. So we're gonna go over some things today on this car. Now this car progressed from a bone stock 96 Mustang GT to an eight second quarter mile car, which it is today. So, you know, there's a lot of growth that we had in this particular car. Uh, so yeah, let's get started on that. What happens when you get to 1149? That's kind of a magic barrier because when you get to that point, that is when you need to have a roll bar in the car. You need to be wearing a fire jacket such as this single layer deal. And let's talk about safety first. When you go to the track, don't show up looking like this with shorts and flip-flops or whatever the case is because that will get you booted faster than anything else. Making sure that you have long pants on with covered toe shoes, no flip-flops, and make sure that you have a fire jacket if your car is gonna be running faster than 1149. Now, this single layer jacket here carries a 3-2A slash one rating, and it is a single layer. Um, this will be good actually from 1149 down to 10 0. Once you get past 10 0, you have to have a multi layer jacket and a rig looking like this. So, the faster you go, the more equipment you have. You've got a Hans device here for the helmet, uh, multi layered pants, shoes, and a fire jacket, and gloves, which are in the car. You notice right here, these are NHRA rule books from 1966, 1971, and this was the last one that I carried. And you notice how much thicker this book is in comparison to these right here. Unfortunately, what has to happen is people have to get hurt and killed for the rules to progress people learn from their mistakes and that's exactly what the nhra has done over the years they have learned from watching accidents of cars and implemented rules to protect you the driver so that you don't face the same fate as many others did before you as a tech inspector coming up to your car the first thing that i would look for on your carburetor is to make sure that you have two throttle return springs. Why is that important? Well, you wouldn't think about it, but throttle stick and that causes all kinds of issues. Second thing we're gonna look for is coolant overflow tanks. Something that is secure, something that's not gonna get coolant on the track. Uh, your fuel lines, making sure that you don't have an excess amount of rubber fuel line, which is 12 inches by the NHRA standard. So that's another big thing. Another thing that sometimes gets overlooked is actually having an SFI approved uh, bell housing and flex plate. Um, this is important, especially on manual transmission cars, having a SFI approved bell housing in case of a clutch explosion and the same thing goes for automatic transmission with a converter. Um, I've seen flick, uh, flywheels come through the firewall of the car into the cap, uh, passenger compartment. 
I've seen all kinds of crazy things through the years. Another thing, once you start getting into the tins, is actually having a balancer that is SFI approved as well. A stock harmonic balancer will not pass tech and they will boot you for it. All right, so you're going faster than 1149. That is when a six point roll bar will actually, by the rules, it's only required to be a five point, but that's where you need to have a roll bar installed and actually have a racing harness with seat belts installed as well. Now, getting into the technical aspects of that, you know, it has to be mild steel or chrome molly tubing, but if it's chrome molly tubing, it needs to be TIG welded. If it's mild steel, it can be uh, MIG welded, but the most important thing about it is making sure that none of the welds are ground. And you can see this has a full-on cage with a funny car addition but your basic six point bar is going to come consist of the hoop the shoulder strap bar the two down bars and the door bar now when you do this you got different ways you can do it you can actually bolt it in the car it'd be a six by six square plate 125 thousandths thick sandwiched between the floor you can do it that way or you can just have the plate in there and fully weld it around the perimeter of the plate itself but either way when you go to tech inspection they may feel around the bar to make sure that there's actually weld all the way around and some tech inspectors will actually look very very close to see if any of the weld has been ground on. When you get your roll bar in your car, is making sure that you have belts in here that are in date. They will be looking for the SFI tag on the belts and make sure that they're still in date. Sometimes if they're somewhat close to running out, they'll still, you know, maybe they're only expired about a month or two, they will let you run them but that's truly up to the inspector's call so making sure that you have end date belts can save you a lot of heartache too another big ticket item for when you go to the track and this pretty this applies to all cars is making sure that you have a working neutral safety switch i have seen and i've made people try to crank their car in gear in the line and if it cranks in gear it's a no-go so just be aware of that when you go in for your nhra track and they will check for neutral safety switch most often than not you need to have a drive shaft loop if you're running any kind of drag slick or drag radial and you're running faster than 1149 the requirements for that is to be a quarter inch thick by a two inch wide strap and no more than six inches away from the front u-joint so making sure that you have proper placement of the drive shaft loop and that it's up to spec not just something homemade that you made out of a u-bolt making sure that it's proper thickness and the width is correct so that they will be accepting of it on old blue here, you can see that we've got 5'8 studs coming through. And that's pretty common for cars that are getting on down into the ETs. But the most important thing about it is when you go into the 10s, a 1099, if you're running a C-clip type rear axle, such as a GM 12 bolt, 10 bolt, any GM, Ford 8.8, whatever the case is you need to have seat kill eliminators and aftermarket axles that is something that they're they will check they will look in there to see uh, behind the wheel sometimes and it all depends on the tech inspector as well because and how many cars you have but for a good rule of thumb is once you're getting a 10 second et you need to have aftermarket axles okay so 
you're going to the track and one of the things the tech inspector is going to be looking at is your fuel cell configuration making sure that you have a divider wall between the passenger compartment and the fuel cell itself making sure that there's actually a ground wire coming off of the cell down to the frame of the car because of static discharge a rollover vent in case the car would end up on its roof something to prevent the fuel from uh, draining in the trunk and catching the car on fire if you're using nitrous one of the things that they may look at or will look at is to make sure of the dot numbers on the bottle making sure that it has an 1800 psi rating on the bottle and if you have the bottle mounted in the passenger compartment like we do making sure that you actually have a blow down tube or line going down into the floor in case the bottle pressure gets to the point where it ruptures the disc inside here it'll vent the nitrous gas outside the passenger compartment now, as you can see here on old blue we've got a fire suppression system on here when you run faster than 1149 you need to have a fire extinguisher mounted in the passenger compartment somewhere where it can be accessed by you from the driver's seat this is important in case you're pinned against the wall and people's having a hard time getting to you or it's taking an extra long time you can actually reach that fire extinguisher get it out and possibly put out a fire that could be in your way now the fire bottle needs to be mounted securely, not tie strapped or anything like that. You actually need to have mounting brackets to mount it securely and make sure that it's easy to release. I couldn't tell you how many times I've seen fire extinguishers people had in a car and it would take them forever to unfasten it and that dispels disaster. So the whole point of you going to the track is to have fun. I couldn't tell you how many times I've seen people go to the track and be kicked off the track for going too fast, not having a roll bar, or not having the proper safety equipment on themselves. Um, another important aspect is the helmet. The helmet carries a certification as well. You know, a lot of people think that a uh, dirt bike helmet will be sufficient at an NHRA track, once you start running to the point where you need to have it, most tracks require it at 14 seconds and above. I mean, below. Yeah, that. But anyways, it'll carry uh, SFI numbers on the Hans device here, and you'll see a M2000 or a SI5 number actually on the helmet. So making sure that you actually have a proper helmet and not something that they won't accept. Well, I hope you get something out of this video. Uh, now, this is not going to be an all comprehensive type deal. You know, if you're seriously thinking about going out to an NHRA sanctioned track, my best advice to you as a former tech inspector is actually invest in a rule book to go over the nuances that you may find because things can change over time and it's been over 10 years since i did it but these are some of the basics that you will actually find when you get to the track and those those things are non-changing as far as neutral safety switch the throttle return springs so on and so forth um, another quick point that i want to talk about is valve stems before i shut up making sure that you actually have metal valve stems in your rims instead of the uh, rubber ones because i have seen cars kicked off the track and you see here that we actually have metal valve stems in these wheels and that's all by design it's one less chance of a potential problem happening so while these rules may seem kind of extreme and you may say well you know why just know that most times someone 
paid for that rule with their life or got hurt very bad and so a lot of times it's so easy to overlook the importance of safety but being able to go to your family after you go to the track and have a good time is priceless and protecting the guy in the other lane so until next time this is andy from unity motorsports garage i'll catch you later